Bem-vindo and welcome to Portugal. Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. So the M3 and now the M4 in many ways signifies a really big deal for the BMW group. Why is that? It's that one production car that gives the group its bragging rights. So it's important. So has the company got it right with the new generation? Yes, I've been waiting to drive these two cars, waiting with bated breath. And why not? The BMW M3 has for long carried the tag of being one of the world's most capable, fun and dynamic road cars. All while looking reasonably tame in its sedan or coupe avatar. Quick history lesson, back in 1990, the E30 was the first M3 and uh, that's when the whole legend, let's say, started. 238 horses, that car impressed people, but it was the next generation which came out in 1992, the E36. That really defined what this whole M3 legacy has been all about ever since then. Straight six engine, 320 horses to many people. This was quite literally the ultimate driving machine. Now, turn of the century and the E46 again took popularity levels for the M3 even higher. 343 horses, but for me, I guess, given my age, the car I've spent the most time driving, the most miles that I've clocked, has to be on the E92. 420 horses, V8. It didn't seem to get better than this. So now the question is, and this is where the history lesson ends, does the new car manage to top just the kind of cult and the kind of uh, overall performance credentials that this one has achieved? Hmm. That's a tough act to follow and so it was crucial to really get under the skin of the new generation what with the badging now splitting into the M3 and the M4. So we brought both these cars to the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve. The circuit is 4.69 kilometers long. We're not going to be doing the entire loop but we've got enough opportunity to see if the promise on the M3 and M4 really does exist. Now remember, these cars are supposed to come alive on the track, so do they? Let's head inside to find out. The track at Portimao is brilliant. Challenging yet thrilling. Undulating and sharp. And it's the perfect test bed for these twins. I had our CNB Jura and Zignition's Adil Jaldaru Khanawala with us and so we are taking turns on both the cars. The 3 litre V6 engine has two equal sized turbos that basically service three cylinders each. The units feature electronic waste gates for more accurate and faster boost control. Was it a wise move from BMW to go from naturally aspirated V8 to twin power turbo V6 in line? Well, you know what? The purists may say otherwise, but after having driven the car, I think the simple answer is yes. What they've done is that they've been smart. There have been simple yet very crucial elements that have been used in this engine to make sure that it's every bit the M3 experience that you're looking for. Now, you've already heard about the two things in terms of uh, what happens with that turbo, but the crucial part, I think, is just where that power delivery comes in. Now, on the outgoing car, you had that really just coming in at one point, the peak power delivery at one point on that RPM scale. Here, the difference is that from about 4,500 RPM all the way to about 7,000 RPM, you carry on hitting that peak optimum power of 431 horses. Now, that is absolute bliss because no matter where you are on that entire huge power band, you continue to get the optimum performance, you continue to get that maximum part, which makes driving oh, so much fun. The M3 can go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.1 seconds. 
and the generous 550 Nm of torque is very apparent in this car. Torque is up a massive 40% compared to the last M3's V8 engine. BMW engineers told me that they had to opt for the 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox because the 8-speed ZF that goes into some of their other cars couldn't handle the torque. Now, the dual-clutch gearbox is responsive on the track for sure, but I have to say that uh, in Sport Plus mode, which is what I'm doing right now on the track, it does have a little bit of a not a delay but there's, there's almost like a little pause when you're actually using the paddle shifters to switch gears and not staying in auto or drive mode and uh, to me that's a little bit of a little bit of a pain because on a manual gearbox I know I would have a little bit more control so when you're coming in fast out of a corner you really want to be able to quickly slam it down and, and take off that little hesitation kind of costs you maybe on the open road it won't be such an issue though This is especially true if you change the gearbox character by fiddling with this button at the base of the gear stick. This allows you to change the response time, gear ratios and generally go from a comfort oriented to a sportier feel. The active M differential optimizes traction and driving stability again to suit the driving conditions. On this fast and really undulating track it's proving very useful to me. With our track drive done, Adil and I are now managing to get quite a few miles in the two cars as we zip across the lovely Algarve countryside. Alright, so it's day two and uh, as you can see that we've got the two cars with us again. Adil's in the other car today because yesterday I spent primarily most of my time driving the M3 in that gorgeous, gorgeous Yas Marina Blue. It's the Austin Yellow with me today. That's the M4 and uh, the two of us are going to stick together. Lots of countryside driving yet again through some gorgeous routes. Let's get on with it. Oh, as we begin the drive the next day, I can already tell you I'm a fan of the new M3 and M4. They're easily some of the best, if not the best work from the M division. And define what the BMW brand stands for and is in a very precise way. We are driving northeast now towards the Mertola municipality close to the Spanish border. Now there's three settings to pretty much everything in the car. You know how Audi has drive select where you can pretty much uh, adjust all the different responses of the car. Well here you have separate buttons that let you, lets you do that. The steering can go from comfort to sport to sport plus. The same is true of the throttle. The same is true of the gear shifts as well. You can adjust all three manually and uh, you can get into the different modes and different configurations in terms of what works for you. It has been fun. I have to say that the sport plus mode is just as dynamic as you expect it should be on a car like this and that's good that's satisfying on the gear changes you've already heard what I had to say that when you put it into the third mode the gears just kind of slam in too, too suddenly and when it's in the first mode there's almost a little sluggishness to it but otherwise it's been an absolute hoot there's very little to defer the two cars but having spent some time now driving the M4 on these beautiful open roads I can tell you that it does drive a tad better. Only just though. So purists would say that this doesn't sound like an M3 or an M4 for that matter because it's not naturally aspirated, it's not a V8. But there has been some emphasis laid to how the car sounds. It has a nice deep rumbly sort of a engine note and uh, when you put it into sport plus mode in terms of the throttle response setting, well then things sort of uh, start singing very differently because the butterfly valves open up and you get this really nice, meaty, growly sort of a throttle response, which frankly is a lot of fun to drive with. So I guess I'm not one of the purists. The countryside just keeps getting more and more gorgeous, by the way, as we keep lapping up the kilometers. Handling is supposed to be a hallmark on a car like this. 
and you know what it is it just really does the job and it's really helped in a very big way by a very precise steering it's been such a pleasure to drive the car with this steering because in all three settings on that steering control you get this great precision you just know exactly where the car is going to go you uh, get a sense of a good feedback from the road and you know what they haven't softened it all those fears that bmw is going to go really soft on the new m3 or the m4 it hasn't happened nice and stiff it gives you this great sense of driving control and yes i have not forgotten to show you the specs it's a nice little recap that summarizes just why i'm having so much fun with these cars isn't it the numbers do justice to the car's credentials the new generation f80 is 80 kgs lighter than its predecessor just that v6 engine is 15 kgs lighter than the v8 was the car uses carbon fiber in the front end strut brace and in the drive shaft this reduces weight and yet offers more rigidity on the inside the car screams sportiness now i won't bore you with the details but expect pretty much every piece of equipment and creature comfort that there is at this end of the market i still love the little detail of the stitching done in m colors and the quality of leather used everywhere the town of mertola is the seat of the municipality it's built on a huge hill on the banks of the guadiana river and dates its origins back to the phoenician and roman times before being controlled by the moors for over 500 years the carbon fiber roofs sort of a signature for the m3 and now the m4 as well there is one interesting point though the engineering team was very clear at bmw that it wanted identical figures on the m3 and m4 when it comes to performance now it's not easy to always achieve that now remember this is just a regular sedan body style so you got a boot there's a bit of a stuck on spoiler lip here but to try and make sure you get exactly the same performance figures on the coupe which has a very different sloping roof line and a stubbier rear end how do you do it well intelligence is what kicks in because what they've done is they've played with the metal here the surface of the metal is very different to what you see on the sedan's boot and there's a bit of a duckbill stretched out kind of a spoiler treatment integrated into the metal that helps you create the same sort of aerodynamics as you get on the sedan and so both the figures end up being identical it's pretty smart isn't it smart indeed and very thoughtfully designed built and engineered that in a nutshell sums up the new M3 and M4 from BMW the cars are fantastic benchmarks will make the competition scurry for cover and will delight their buyers will india get the coupe well i expect the m3 first later this year but i do think the m4 will be offered though in limited numbers